How long did it take you to realize that the business was racist? Ooh, like I claimed, I claimed my, my, my success. I visualized it. So for a minute, I was like, the business is racist, mm -hmm. but not for me. And when it didn't, when I wasn't, then I was like, oh, okay, it's, it's, it's bigger than me. <laughs> right. It's bigger than performance. Mm -hmm. I have to wait for, for time, for history. I'm Van Lathan. Welcome to the Red Pill Podcast, where every week we're going to give you the brutal truth of reality. Not what you're getting on Twitter, what everyone's preaching to their choirs. None of the bias that you get on the mainstream media news outlets. We're going to give you what people really think, what they really say, and how they really act. Our first guest on the Red Pill Podcast is Tay Diggs. Before we get to him, I'll tell you why we call it the Red Pill. If you guys haven't seen The Matrix, you should probably stream that tonight. Uh, but if you remember that movie, Neo, the hero, is given two choices, the red pill and the blue pill. The red pill is the brutal truth, the freedom of expression. Blue pill is the blissful ignorance that a lot of people in our society have turned to. He chose red, and by listening to this podcast, every single week, you have two. Our guest today, like I said before, Tay Diggs. You know him from the stage and the screen. He's one of those guys that depends on who you are is what you know him for. If you're white, you probably know him from private practice. And if you're black, you know him from any plethora of movies where he played the sexy black dude. We're going to talk about that and also about some of the changes that he's witnessed in Hollywood and black Hollywood over the years. Thank you for popping pills with me today. So, Tay. Yes. You're here. You made it here. Oh, boy. I've got the worst uh, yeah. directional luck ever. See, but the, I'm here. The interesting thing about that is <laughs> you, it, there, there was a time in human civilization where you, someone would say, I have bad directional luck, right? Right. And then it was a commonly accepted excuse for them being late. Exactly. Then technology. Sure. And the uh, mobile phones. The with, mobile phones with uh, smart technology. Applications are on, on, they have their applications <laughs> on the phones that people can use. <laughs> Even, but my. You gotta luck, get here. This is this is why I, I'm I'm such a. You well, know, we we should say that Tay was late. Is what we're talking. Well, about. Well, not late. I mean, I'm I was beyond late. Yeah, it's this okay. was I was just misguided. Yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? That's good, right? That's a good way to put it. Here's the thing, though. For me, what you have to understand is, <laughs> I'm in chill mode, right? I'm at thank, my desk. Thank God. I'm chilling. But this shows a very important cultural distinction. <laughs> Because the white people were freaking <laughs> out about the fact that you was laid dog. Like, listen, like, the, the, one, I, I, I the really nicest feel guy, like Maddie, I do great Maddie, things for right the race. Here. Yeah, right. <laughs> so this makes up for it. He There's came over to be... me. He checked me. He was like, he's like, where's Tay? I was like, yo, I, I, I can't, I can't really tell you where he is. He goes, whatever. And he walked away. He stormed away. Oh. Very I'm so, sorry. This is the power of mysticism. It goes beyond, you know, mm -hmm. GPS. It's just this thing is, yeah, it's connected to me. But but yeah. I'm here. You're here. Red I'm, Pill I'm, Podcast. Yes. Our very first guest, man. Oh, like, for real? Your first I didn't guest. I know that. You're, See, you're, I love you so much. I just came sight unseen. Right. I didn't know what. I don't what know you're what getting I'm into, doing. But what, I'm here. What's gonna happen? We should actually talk about that. Like. We've known each other for some years. We you have, and I'm so, people don't, can I talk to this, people don't know, you don't know what this cat can do yet. You don't know. Mm. I do, and I'm very excited for y'all. You're a, you're a different, it's, it's, I hate that I have to say this, mm -hmm. but you're, he's a different kind of black dude. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Yo, yo like it's, all, it's like we're coming to, you know, it's a new day. Mm. And you're you're part of the. He's a new. He's one of the new black dudes. So, new black dudes. Yeah, man. Oh, well, so are do you? Are you one of the old black? I'm dudes? I'm one of the old new black dudes. Right. You know what I mean? When yeah. I was first on the scene, there weren't many cats, you know, that weren't getting made fun of for speaking properly. <laughs> right. <laughs> for having a book. Yeah. You got made fun of in my day. You know yeah. I mean? Right. 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 I'm, I got that whole thing. I got saying? the. I got the talking white thing. You and know? Stuff like that. But but now you're established and um and you're writing and your style of writing I'm really I'm really excited. So for you, we met. Me and Tay met, and I gotta be honest with you because I've never actually told you this story before. Me and Tay <laughs> met like I met most people before. We met on the basketball okay. court. We met on the basketball court years ago. Right. And I have a vision. I had a vision. I still have a vision. <laughs> and I'm on the basketball court. And at this point. You know, I'm unemployed. All of this stuff is right. going on. I'm writing, okay, but I'm trying to get there. Right. And so I see you, and I'm thinking, 
yo, like I start thinking like Instagram thought type of situation thoughts. I'm like, yo, I gotta find some kind of way to make inroads with this brother, man. <laughs> I, was like, I never would have thought. I was, like, I was like, I gotta find some kind of way to make inroads. And luckily, you were pretty cool. And we, we talked. Really? Like, yeah, yeah. Cause you, you, when I first saw you, you seemed like you had an attitude to me. Yeah. Cause I wanted to subjugate you on the basketball court first. Oh, for real? Yeah, I wanted to dominate you on the basketball court first, it make you worked. look up to me, and then it very, <laughs> it completely works. And then after that, and then by the time even when you said just it was like a what's up, I was like, oh, he talk, spoke to me. <laughs> oh man, and I then, played. And then, and then we sat down. I remember the day I was like, like it's kind of like uh, then we uh, fattened you up, and I was like, nah, it's time to go and fuck uh, you. <laughs> So I sat down and me and Tay had like a two hour conversation. I go home, I tell my girl, I'm my like, yo, goodness. me and Tay are friends. It worked. Yeah, well man. done. Appreciate it, bro. Okay. And now we're here years and years later. Luckily, man. you 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 uh you you can uh, uh you, you have what it takes to, to be behind that. So I don't I don't feel so bad. But yeah. I feel a little You got taken advantage of, bro. Okay. That's LA. LA, y'all. Let me ask you a little bit about what you said earlier though, as far as like uh the new black, this kind of new era that we're in right mm. now. I was at the Black Panther screening oh, um, okay. this past Monday. Fantastic, For fantastic real? movie. Okay, good, Absolutely good. great, absolutely great. Very important that the movie was Exactly. Very important that the movie was You know why that is, so like, oh, that's a relief. It, it, yeah, I was relieved too. It's yeah. kind of like when you go to see your boy do stand-up. Like you, you go to see again. your boys do stand-up. Thank God you're not a stand-up comedian. Have you, has that happened to you? Oh my goodness. And they whack, mm. and you can't tell them, but you want to tell them, but you can't. Can't. The whole people, movie I've it? tried that before and it doesn't work. Don't do that, people. Don't be. Un- a lot of times you can't be honest with people. How do you do it? What do you do? What do you say? You you lie a little bit. Sometimes you have to lie. So how do I? How do we then know, based upon that, that everything that you said about me earlier was accurate? You could be, be lying to me right now. Because of the way that we met and what you have just disclosed, mm-hmm. now I feel like I owe you to be honest. <laughs> I, I will be. But you. But you're that type of cat, though. You. You. Because I'm. Because of the way I met you, you seemed like you can take honesty. Yeah. Because you're honest with other people. For, yeah. For the most part, right? Yeah. Well, you know, it depends on what the outcome is going to be. Of okay. The honesty, you know. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta. Uh, so, in this new sort of, I, I look at right now what's happening in Hollywood. Right. Is when you have like Issa Rae and Donald Glover yeah, and yeah, Chad yeah. Bozeman. Yeah. We seem to be sort of in a um, in a zenith, a golden age or sort of newfound mm-hmm. a height of, mm-hmm. of black creativity and black excellence out there on the screen, really from all different sort of areas and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Number one, do you see that, okay? And number two, the, 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 the generation that you're a part of, mm. you, Morris, all mm. of those guys like mm. that, mm. do you feel like you're a part of it? Do I feel like I'm a oh, part of what's going on now? Yeah. Um, yes, yes, and no. Yeah, yeah, yes, and no. I think, hmm, well, this is a good question. I like talking about this stuff. Can we cuss on this? On the, yeah, on go this? for it. Yeah, yeah. I love talking about this shit. <laughs> uh, all right, well, first off, I feel like there's a difference between, you know, uh, uh, this kind of new black excellence being at its height. Mm-hmm. There's a difference between that and being allowed in. Mm. That's that's where I think we are because it's not I'm I don't want to say that all of this talent didn't exist before because right. it did. Yeah. People were not just people just weren't given the opportunities. Mm. So now we are blessed in that people are finally realizing, "Oh, Black people can do this. Mm-hmm. Oh, and maybe you know we might benefit if we let them. Right. Because uh, unfortunately, we're still in a position where we are being let in. Right. Um, we're banging the doors down, but once the the door comes down, they're like, oh, okay, well we'll get that. We'll clean that up. Enjoy yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so there's that. Um, uh, you know, I'm I'm at an interesting place now because I'm getting older, and you know, I'm not the new young hip dude. So, uh, nor I, w- I would say, I want to say I'm not a part of it, mm-hmm. just because I feel like it has, to, it has a lot to do with youth and being new. Right. Um, but I feel like, you know, all, all of us, we, we help start it. Right. So, so, 
you know, like would there be a, a, a I'm not saying I'm Jordan, but would there be a Kobe, a, you know, what would Kobe be without Jordan? You right. Know what I mean, we all, you know, we're all part of the uh, the struggle. Um, so yeah, so I'm, I, I like to sit sit back and, 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 and watch these, these youngins, you know, do their thing. Hmm. Is there any part of you that thinks because, you know, we're seeing not just people's faces on the screen, but mm. we're seeing overall deals mm -hmm. and stuff like that, and mm -hmm. all of these things coming creatively. Mm -hmm. Is there any part of you that's like, damn, man, like, like this, this, this wave is, is, is different, because we're in more creative control now than we were before. I think we all, we all benefit no matter what, mm -hmm. you know? Um, Cause I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm producing now as well. Work. So yeah, so, you know, we all, we all, we're all benefiting. Yeah. You know, regardless. So, you know, I could be in a position where one of these cats hire me, you know, or I could be in a position where, you know, I could hire them and have them be a star and something that I, you know, that I want to produce or direct. So, right. it's 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 an exciting time. Um, no, it's an exciting time. Period. Right. Um, people need to forgive me if I am, you know, if I'm standing a little bit off center with my arms crossed, just because, you know. Um, we're still climbing and until we are in a position you know where um where we are feeding ourselves instead of you know uh uh begging at the door i'm i'm still a little um uh you know cautiously not, optimistic exactly cautiously optimistic exactly now you kind of exploded at least to us like when right. when, when when stella right. first hit you know, I didn't know anything about rent. Right, I didn't know anything right. about any of that stuff. Right. Um, and it was sort of you were the big, hot thing at that point. Uh, what was that feeling like for you? And then, well, first of all, just describe what what, what, what is it like to have the whole world? What is it like to be the a Michael B. Jordan or like whatever at the See, time? See, and once again, it's it's different. It's different now because, you know, way more white people know who Michael B. Jordan is than who knew who Tay Diggs was. At that point? At that point. Why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you didn't get the crossover no, appeal? No, 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 no. Mm. Uh -uh. That was, that was like, they gave, they gave, they gave, they gave that to Will Smith at the time. Right. He was the one, you know, unless he were a comedian. Mm -hmm. um, and I got, um, I was very, very excited and happy and, and you know, uh, um, you know, as you said, the optimistic without the caution. Right. Um, until I realized, oh wait, this isn't the way I had it in my head. In my head, the business wasn't racist. Right. It was like, okay, I got this big movie. Mm -hmm. Everybody's gonna love me. I want to be on the cover like Matt Damon was. I remember specifically, Matt Damon was on um, the cover of Vanity Fair, and I was like, oh okay, because we about the same age. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he started a little bit ahead of me, but I was like, oh, I have, I have, I have this to look forward to. Because up to that point, everything had worked out exactly the way I <laughs> right. wanted. You hadn't seen any reason why it wasn't going to be the exactly. way. Exactly, yeah. and that was really what messed me up. Um, you know, because I started working, I was very blessed. Right out of college, got a couple of Broadway shows, and then I got the first movie I got was a movie that big, yeah. opposite Angela Bassett, and it was just like how I had envisioned it. You know, in my head, how I wanted it to happen. Right. So I had no reason to believe, you know, it was going to go any differently. It was at the biggest agency, CAA. Mm -hmm. um, and then I said, okay, I spoke to my agents. I said, stop. I don't want to just be in the black shit. I want to be Matt, Matt Damon. Work. And I wasn't, and I didn't realize that one, the, the business was racist. Two, you know, when you make a request like that, agencies send out your info and then they have to wait for it to get accepted. Right. And, and no, none of that was happening. So then I started leaving the agency and chasing it when I should have just probably just stayed there, chilled out until I had gotten so big on the black side mm -hmm. that the white side couldn't deny me. Because yeah. it's like, you start on a black movie, you have to do well, then you start out the black guy in white movies, mm -hmm. and then once you're really, really funny as the black guy in white movies, then maybe they'll give you your own your, your own thing. You know what right. I mean? Yeah, That's yeah. what it was. That's what I thought it was back in the day. Do you feel like now, because when you look at shows like Atlanta and mm. Insecure, mm -hmm. um, and you know, movies like Get Out has a more diverse cast. But when you you see 
things like that that are such from a black perspective, mm -hmm. uh, it seems to be that those things are resonating more generally mm -hmm. than at that time. So 100%. So at, this, at that point, maybe you felt like being in movies with all black cast or all mm -hmm. black creatives, it wasn't going to take you to that point. You feel like that's different now? I feel it, like it can be, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Depending on, you know, yes, it 100% is, 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 is different now. I think it's much better. Um, I was just on the, on the phone with my agent, um, and you know, there's still literally, this is why I'm cautiously optimistic. Uh, all right, well this, uh, this, 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 uh, this role, it says it's, it's Asian, <laughs> let me call and make sure. You know, let me see if they're really going to go Asian or if it's going to go, like, they're still, right. <laughs> for all the TV shows, they, they still have everything chopped up. Right, yeah, you know yeah, I mean, yeah. there were certain, I've missed out on roles because, you know, the, the second lead was black. I remember uh, Most Deaf was in a certain movie, and because Most Deaf was in that movie, I, I wanted a different part. But because Most Deaf was in that movie, that means the part that I wanted went to a white guy. Right. And if it was a white guy, then they couldn't go to, they couldn't have two black guys in the movie. Yeah. It was that simple. So that happened on Hitch. You ever hear of the story? Hitch, what? Hitch couldn't be. They had to get a Latina opposite Will. At first, it was for Cameron Diaz, and then it was going to go to a black lady. They had to get. Uh, they couldn't have two black Somebody ladies because then it's a black movie. Ethnically movies. ambiguous. Right. 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 We'll like we're really while. we're really dealing with that. Mm -hmm. And and I couldn't I couldn't. It was so ridiculous that I didn't want to believe it. Yeah. And then I just had to throw my hands up and be like, all right, I'll just wait. I'll just wait. How long did it take you to realize that the business was racist? Ooh. Because like, you come out, you're having all of this success. At what point did you go, yo, man, this shit is fucked? It, it almost was. This is going to sound whack. But, like, I had, um, like, I claimed, I claimed my, my, my success. I visualized it. So for a minute, I was like, the business is racist, mm -hmm. but not for me. I'm going to be the Word. cat that's going to, like, Transcend change. that, yes. yeah. And when it didn't, when I wasn't, I mean, to, to that extent, to the extent mm -hmm. that I, you know, or that, that my ambition, you know, had, you know, took hold of me, then I was like, oh, okay, it's not, it's not, it's, it's, it's bigger than me. <laughs> right. It's bigger than performance. Mm -hmm. I have to wait for, for time, for history. Um, because it wasn't just me. There were other cats that I was looking at where I was like, he, this cat has all that it has everything it takes. Mm -hmm. Why, why, why isn't the world noticing this? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, you know, it's, it, it taught me a lot. Uh, it taught me uh, uh, patience, you know, and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and, you know, what is real, realizing what is real. Like, so, from my perspective, being mm -hmm. in Louisiana, watching you guys when y'all were doing y'all mm -hmm. thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, we talk about a golden age now, but to us it was a golden age then, right? Because mm -hmm. when you look at movies like that you were in, just go back over some of the movies that you were in over your career. <laughs> we're talking about The Wood. Somebody the other day said, hey man, you were in all the classics. That's what I'm saying. The classics. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're talking about The Wood, you're talking about Best Man, you're talking about Brown Sugar. <laughs> You're talking about all of these movies. There was a run there. I mean, there you was. missed out on Love and Basketball. I guess Omar must have cut your head off for that one. I mean, they were dating. Right, so, right, you know. <laughs> right. Um, so you look at all of these movies, and they're very important films, especially to young black people who wanted to be in the industry and wanted to be mm -hmm. in the business then. I guess my question to you is the same question that I ask a lot of black performers and mm -hmm. a lot of different people is, why weren't, why wasn't, should I say, being in those films and having that cachet and celebrating that part of the culture and that part of art, why wasn't that enough? Why, was, why do you think to you it was important to have the crossover appeal? Because, for example, nowadays, you know, we seem to get really upset about situations like the Oscars mm. or the the Emmys mm. or the Grammys, right? Sure. Those are mainstream awards that are given out to, to black performers on a sometimey basis. Mm -hmm. However, we have award shows that celebrate African Americans mm -hmm. exclusively. Mm -hmm. And it's very hard to get some of the A-list stars to go to those award shows, mm -hmm. to accept those awards, to perform mm -hmm. at those situations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for you personally, what made it important for you to, especially at that age, realizing um, that crossing over was such a big deal? Why did you want it so badly? Uh, at the end of the day, it's, um, 
it was between money, um, you know, the, the white cats were getting, it's kind of like women and, and men today. You know, yeah. women are still, it's, it's you know, for, for where we are, you know, you know, technologically speaking and what we can do in space and on the moon, you know, where we are socially, it doesn't make sense. There's a big disconnect. We're yeah. still, we're still, you know, struggling with, with equality mm -hmm. in between sexes and between sexual orientation, race, ethnicity, all that. We're still dealing with it. Mm -hmm. You know, these women are still fighting for getting paid the same amount. It's ridiculous. So, yeah. um, at the end of the day, you know, I wanted that big money. Yeah, I wanted the cover of Vanity Fair. You yeah. know what I mean, I wanted everybody to know who I was. Um, Cause that's, you know, like the, like the, the dudes, uh, what is it, Jay Farrell, white famous. That's, it's a thing. It's a thing, I get it, yeah. White famous. Um, you know, when you have your aspirations, you know, you don't, you don't want to be kind of famous. You want to be famous famous. Right. Um, so that, that was what it was, you know. And then, you know, you have to deal with, uh, with, uh, with award shows and whatnot. You know, black people, we're still behind, and that's not necessarily our fault. Mm -hmm. So we're still play, pay, uh, playing catch up in certain, in, in, in certain instances. So a lot of times people don't want to take into account, okay, um, these shows may not run as smoothly as some of the shows that have been on the air longer. Right. So in order for us to move forward, we, we have to, you know, um, and it's not fair, but right. life ain't fair. You right. gotta make compromises, right. do you know what I mean? Um, and a lot of times people, once they get to a certain level, they're like, I don't really, I don't really need to make these compromises. So they need to catch up. Are, so are, are what you saying? Are, are what you saying is, do you feel like sometimes in the black community or in black Hollywood that we lose our best creatives and they don't work on these different mm -hmm. award shows? Mm -hmm. They don't work on these movies. They feel mm -hmm. like they've graduated to something. Or, else? or, um, you know, uh, the, a lot of times it can be a positive thing, where you know we are teaching people. Yeah. You know what I mean? That bringing people up and giving them opportunities and they might not be as as uh, as uh, experienced. Right. You know what I mean? Because you have to start somewhere. Um, you know, it's when the, you know, these, 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 you know, white businesses say, well, we, I looked for a certain type of writer or I looked for a certain type of technician and there aren't, there aren't any. Right. Do you know what I mean? Right. Um, so a lot of times people have to, you know, we have to, we have to throw some people, you know, some bones. Mm. Um, the entire time that you were coming up, because I want to now talk about mm. the black audience itself. Okay. 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 The entire time that you were coming up, you were dating or married to Adina uh -huh. Mazel? Yes. That entire uh -huh. time? I'm going to be real with you. <laughs> you saw, you uh -uh. saw the nervous <laughs> in the head to, <clears throat> I'm like stealing myself. Right. I'm right. going to be real with you. So, okay. I remember the moment that my mother realized that your wife, your no, wife was white. I know, but my white was wife. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the moment my mother realized it. My mother... And I never forget this because my mom is a hippie, and see, it goes like, deep. Like my my mom is a hippie. My mom isn't like that. You know what I mean? She, we, I get we all it. get. You know, and I get so it. I remember there was, a, and, then, and she saw a picture. And she goes, "That's his wife." <laughs> and I was like, yeah, "I mean, yeah, they man." She goes, "Oh." <laughs> <laughs> Like, you feel, you know, and, yes. I, and you know, and we, and obviously we know what sisters go through. Yes. It's a and, compliment, actually. Yeah, yeah, you know, like what, what sisters go through, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When that came, mm -hmm. you, when you go from being mm -hmm. the love interest of Angela Bassett and the mm -hmm. love interest mm -hmm. of Sanaa Lathan mm -hmm. and all it is, um, when that came, how do you feel like that impacted your career? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I know. Did it impact your career? I, I don't know. I, I would like to. I would like to think no, but I don't know you, the movies that I didn't get. I don't know if directors or producers, you know, thought okay, I would cast him in this movie, but black women are salty. I, what, I don't know. Do you I, feel like I, black women were salty when they found? I that? felt like. Some were. Mm -hmm. I I don't feel like it got in the way of of anything. I don't know. I, I, to this day. You know, I don't read Instagram or Twitter or what mm -hmm. people post. Right. Um, I felt like, you know, uh, I always felt fully supported 
um, career-wise. Right. When it came to my social life, you know, people yeah. always made assumptions. Right. Um, you know. Because even, they, they, they have said things. Like, and I've, it's funny because I'll, I'll tell people that we're friends and something yeah. that, that, that they always act like is not true. Right. But I'll tell people that we're friends and they'll be like, yo, is he down? Yo, yeah. is Tay down? Right. And I'll just be straight up, dog. Like Tay got more niggerish tendencies than anybody. I <laughs> mean, I'll, I'll be like, I'll be like, I'll be like, yo. I'm like, yo, man. Don't like, yeah. don't, I don't mean, get it twisted. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So has has that been a thing for you? Oh, totally, man. Totally. And then that, uh, uh, you know, now these days there's no excuse. Mm -hmm. So I have no time for it. But for a while, well, you're dating I was, a black lady now. Ah, uh, yes. Did you have t-shirts made? Mix, of course. Yeah, you had to let it Where was a, t a parade? <laughs> you know what I mean? My whole family. My mother was like, oh. <laughs> Your mom was yes, like. Yes, <laughs> she told me, oh, it hurt my feelings at 13. Um, I was, by reading this magazine, I said, oh, she's just a black woman. Mm -hmm. uh, she's pretty, I want to marry her. And she said, oh, honey, you're going to marry a white woman. At 13. <laughs> and I was like, oh. Mommy, dude, yeah, she was she was right. But yeah, to this but day, whether I'm out at the club or whatever, I still get. I thought you only like white girls. I thought you only like white girls. And you know, it's 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 been a life lesson of 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 you know realizing you can't kowtow. Is that a yeah? You know, um, people didn't know me. Mm -hmm. People didn't understand me. Um, the ones that that got to know me understood. But it's it's part of what comes with this business, you know. You you a uh, certain side of you is seen, and you kind of just have to accept, you know, uh, the judgments that 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 uh, that that comes with. Um, it took me a minute to not be offended. It took me a minute to not feel the need to justify. Um, yeah, how do you navigate that? I mean, I did the best I could, you know. But at the end of, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Right. You know, I could, you know, I could. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how many times I explain myself. There's always, there's always going to be somebody. Are talking. you in a fuck it stage of life right now? Yeah. You're definitely in a. I, I'm getting yeah. that vibe. You're in a fuck it stage yeah. right now. Yeah. Well, it's just I'm too old to 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 cap to. I got kids. Yeah. I got other things. I've lived enough to be like if if anybody has any issue with anything. Yeah. I'm like fuck fuck, fuck you. you. Yeah. I really don't have time. Like, just think. Use your head. Mm -hmm. We, you know, because we are in this age of you know new blackness. I have no, I have no time for the old whack shit. Right. You know, with Glover and I, like all these people coming up. Cause you know what's funny? Hmm. Those guys have. Those guys are fucking with white chicks. I mean, I don't. Like, hey, I, I know. I know. For real? I'm just saying. For yeah, real? Donald Glover. <laughs> Donald Glover. I, lo like, like, I love that he doesn't give a fuck. He I doesn't, love that. I, what my I guess is, do you feel like? Because think about it now. You got Kanye West. You got yeah. Donald Glover. You got yeah. Wiz, who was Amber Rose. I guess she's Kate Verdon. Do you feel like know, you... First off, I didn't know if she was white. Amber Rose? Amber Rose? Yeah. I guess she's kind of almost white. Okay. She's like, she's know. Kate Verdon. So there's part of that that's like... Okay. Yeah. I'm not sure. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I guess it's almost like you took a bullet for those guys a little bit. Because they're not getting any of that. I think I wasn't me. I don't think you know. It's yeah. just times were different then. You know what I mean? Right. Or they just don't care. They don't give a fuck. They don't care because there's still people out there talking stuff. Oh, Michael B. Jordan for sure. Yeah, they talk yeah, about it all the time. Yeah, yeah. So and you know he's. It's not. It's not. Uh, it doesn't seem to be. You know, messing with his career. Word. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. family. You gotta. You know. Uh, it's like you. You love them more than than anything. But then you also got to deal with. With all the bull, but but it's family. Ever any resentment towards black women because of some of those attitudes? Yeah, I mean, deep down inside. Yeah, do you know what I mean? I don't want to say I suppress it, but um, I just watch it, and and you know, like like with um, when it happens to you personally, even though you understand the logic. Yeah. There's trauma there. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I don't know if I can ever mess with a white girl now. You know what right. I mean? And I don't. I don't like that. That goes against 
who I am as a person. Right. Why you feel um, like you can't? Why? Why? I, I feel like I've had to deal with that so long that it has changed what I think I like. Word. What I'm attracted to. Mm -hmm. Um. So no more white girls for. I don't years. know. I don't. I don't know. But yeah. but it's not. It's not where I, where my eyes you know gravitate to naturally. Yeah. Um. And a lot of people would say, oh, I should feel relieved, but um, I don't, it might, it might be racist and I don't want to be racist. Right. You know what I mean? I'm not racist, but you know, bigoted Absolutely. or whatever the word is. Yeah. Um, um, I don't want that, you know, I, I wasn't raised to, to look at someone's race and, and be attracted to one race more than another. Mm -hmm. But I, I, you know, I think any psychiatrist or therapist would probably say after, it's probably textbook, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's interesting because, you know, as a, a lot of times it seems, you know, counterintuitive as black people, we want the highest degree of freedom, but we hold ourselves to a standard that's sometimes restrictive in a way. Sub. And the tightrope is that there's almost nothing in America that's more assailed and, and more devalued than a black woman. And we all, we all know that, right? Mm. Like it's, 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 at least as black men, you know, we're, fetishized in a way, mm -hmm. we're loved and respected mm -hmm. in a way. Sometimes with sisters, their beauty isn't appreciated. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, you know, they're, they're caricatured in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. So I, I just remember having situations with my mother and my sister to where I, I had to do something impossible, which is actually understand what it's like mm. to look at the world mm. through the eyes of someone who feels unloved. Mm -hmm. And um, it just must be, but, but having said all of that, mm -hmm. it's still black dudes out there that just fall in love with white girls. And it's, they, it's, it's, it's black women that fall in love with white men and the mm -hmm. black men act, react the same way. So a, as a culture, I guess, um, sometimes it's difficult. And I talk, I talk to, to, to black ladies about this and they're normally very forthright with mm -hmm, me. As mm -hmm. a culture, it's sometimes hard to understand where you know, that hurt and that pain stops mm. and really just us restricting ourselves and mm -hmm. being a certain way towards ourselves begins. Yes. Because there are yeah. a lot of guys out there that'll say, yeah. if, you know, if, 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 you, if you're not with the black woman, then you're not anything. Mm -hmm. then, you know, what about Harry Belafonte? What mm -hmm. about other guys like this that have, yeah. that have made such intros? But, you know, like I said, man, it's, 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 it's something that's, that's, that's changing now. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, uh, can, I, can I really quick speak to that? Sure. Very quickly. Yeah. I think, you know, and this is once again, in order for us just as a people mm -hmm. to kind of move forward, and it's easy for me to say this because I'm a, I'm a black male, but the only way, whether this is just in life or as a black woman or man or whoever you are, to move forward is to regardless of what the outside feels about you, is to learn how to love yourself. Word. Regardless. Word. And to not make excuses. Word. It's not fair, mm -hmm. but it works, and it's the only way. Because if you wait for other people to validate you, you know what I mean? I feel you, Doc. Um, so, so that, you know, we're, we're at a time where, you know, I'm, 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 I'm encouraging everyone, especially black women, mm -hmm. You know, the more time you spend pointing fingers, you know, the less time, you know, you're going to grow as a person. Right. And then the less, you know, the, the less you're, you're going to be able to move forward. Yeah. I mean, sisters are dope. They don't really need us anyway, man. <laughs> That's what time, I'm saying. It's, it's, sisters are dope. It's about do time. It. They, do they, they, you. They don't need us anyway. And then switch it. Right. You know I mean, switch it up. Um, They do need us and we need them, but they don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me ask you this. Um, I'm going to give you an opportunity right now to tell the world about which Hollywood executives sexually harassed you back in the day. Go ahead and get it off your chest. <laughs> I mean, Terry Crews talked about it. Terry Crews, 250 pounds, let a man grab his nuts in front of his wife. You, which, which ones came Ooh. at you? Uh, we want names in the studios if they worked at the end <laughs> where they are now. I don't mean to lessen. You know, well, we're not lessening in it, right. but, but, but in all seriousness, the reality right. is that this is a very important issue um, mm -hmm. that women have been talking mm -hmm. about and raising, but there have also been uh, several 
you know, male performers mm. in the industry that have talked about mm. practices back in Hollywood where mm-hmm. they felt right. um, compelled to do things and stuff like that. Was that a thing? No. Never for you? No, no, no. Um, so you're just no. ugly in these streets. Nobody wanted a piece of Nobody the chocolate. Nobody wanted some chocolate digs. I, uh, <laughs> and I'm very gay friendly, too. Right. So, mm-hmm. so you know. Um, was, this a, was this something because... <clears throat> you go back some time. Was this something that you guys, because now what happens is shit goes down and everybody says we had no idea. Okay. And then other people go, well, we always knew about that guy. Yeah. The question was, which one was it? Was there a climate that you were aware of was going on? You know what? <clears throat> and this has to go with the whole white thing. I wasn't white famous. And I feel like, you know, uh, for whatever reason, in, in, my, in my experience, you know, you know how back in the day you were like, "Oh, those are white problems." I didn't, I didn't hear about it. Do you feel like on. that was a white thing? That, that the climate um, they were talking about. When I was coming up, I think so, only because you know I didn't hear about it, and mm. most of the people you know I was dealing with, you know, we were, um, you know, we were like the stepchildren. Do you right. know what I mean? It was like, oh, the black, the the black project at Universal or the black. Do you know what I mean? Right. Um, Terry Crews was he was kind of kind of white famous when mm-hmm. this went down. It was at a party, uh, I think, uh, at a WME party. If I'm if I'm being so, yeah, the, right. the guy was an you agent I mean? over there or is an agent over there. And he had done, you know, he had he he he's come he's come a long way. So, um, so what you're you saying? You get is, what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, so at, so right. So you got to feel comfortable. These people had to feel comfortable. I'm trying to say. Like, is there any part of this? No, I get what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? saying this there, white dude had to feel comfortable enough mm-hmm. in his own surroundings. To be able to pull some shit like that yeah, off. Yeah, he wasn't at the black party at the, you know what I mean? Right. Like he was. Is there any part of them, <laughs> is there any part of this that you think like, they just wasn't going to try black women like that? Or, do you, or, or, or is there any part of this that. I feel like it would take a specific type of person. And we're talking stereotypes and generalizations. Sure. Absolutely. But absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. someone who 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 felt that they were beyond everybody else. Right. You know what I mean, uh, you have, you would have to feel so entitled. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Or be just a little crazy. Or yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, what's your what's your take on it? Well, like what I mean, you know, like what just over Ooh, overall wow. the, the the whole issue because there's a dichotomy here. Yeah, and, and it's starting to become a situation to where, you know, you're looking at a sit you're looking at a. At a, at, a, at a seismic shift mm. Um, mm. in the town from one where these things were locked away in rooms and not talked about and not discussed mm-hmm. to where it seems like we're moving towards now to where literally I'm afraid to be a fan of anyone. You can't, you can't say not, you look, you feel like you can't say you look nice today. Like I got to, mm. you know what I mean? Right. Uh, check myself and say, well, is it? And there are friends of mine where I literally have said, okay, it's a Christmas party. I've had a few drinks. I want, I would, just between you and me, if I were to say you look good in that skirt, like, how would you take it? Like, seriously. Yeah. I spoke to some people and, you know, they're like, oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. But, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not. You ask just like that? Uh-huh. Because I got to admit, that's creepy as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I got, like, well, these are people I, gotta, I knew. Like, I got to admit, if you ask these like that. These are people I knew. <laughs> if I was to say you look good in that skirt, how would you take that? <laughs> just come out and say <laughs> I did not. You never know. Right. It's, you know, it's pilot right. season. You, I don't. You know. I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to offend anybody. But um, it's a tough time. It's a tough. I think at the end of the day, all this needs to happen. Yeah, of course. All everything needs to to crumble down to the ground before you know we can rebuild. Mm-hmm. But I think you know there are a couple of things at play. I think there are a lot. There are a lot of sick people out there, and when I say sick, I mean people that are, you know, ha- have issues that need to be tended to. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Um, and then um, there's an issue with sexuality in America. Yeah. And, and I think what you're getting now is, is the product of it being suppressed. Work. Do you know what I mean? Um, you know, so you know, give, you know, me, I don't want to say men will be men. Mm-hmm. Um, that being said, what, you know, what, when you're suppressing, you know, wh- who you are and mm-hmm. what, what, what is natural, it comes out in inappropriate ways. Right. You know what I mean? When you, so that's interesting, though, because even before the, um, I watched an, uh, an episode of The Breakfast Club mm-hmm. um, 
shout out to Charlemagne the God. I, I watched an episode of The Breakfast Club mm -hmm. and Leah Dunham was on there. Mm. And they, they were talking to Leah Dunham about these issues and mm -hmm. he asked her, he said something, I'm gonna remember it, he said, how would you feel if you're walking down the street and someone says, damn, you got a fat ass. Mm -hmm. And Lena Dunham, who is uh, obviously one of the poster children for, I guess, new age feminism, said mm -hmm. that she actually might enjoy that. Mm -hmm. Um, now, I don't want to get into mansplaining this whole thing sure. because I don't understand what it's like to be catcalled or anything you. like that. I feel you. However, as a man in Hollywood that mm. women dig, I know that you're, you, that you're uh, in a relationship, but as a, as a man, like, how do you feel like you know when it's gone too far? I think that's the question that we're trying to ask because how do we as men know the line of when it's not right. I think because we are men and because women are women and they have been dealing with so much, we need to um, basically do whatever they say now. Word. You know That's what I mean? the safest thing, by the way. Yeah, right? <laughs> right. We should, we should accept, I call it yeah, accepting the program. Yeah, just deal with it because at the end of the day, is it, you know, is it, is it really so bad that I can't say you got a fat ass? Like, right. am I, is that gonna really mess up my day? What uh, made you post a picture of your ass on Instagram? Humor, <laughs> humor, man. <laughs> I thought it was very funny, <laughs> you know? You've been like, working out, dog. Uh, <laughs> you've, been, like, you've been working out, man. Like, you, like you, I mean, you know, I'm your homie, I, I can tell you, you know, you've been working Good out. Good for so you. you. Good for you, you for feeling comfortable enough to say that. You, you, you know, you're keeping it real. <laughs> it was a very, because listen, because here's the deal. I, I thought it was so funny. It's a thing because people. Women do it constantly. All the time. Constantly. Right. Um, I think also was the context. <laughs> but, you know, it makes people. <laughs> do you know how many screenshots? There are two times when being <laughs> being your friend has really made people like hit my um hit my uh, text up. Okay. Well, one time we went to that that Clipper game and we okay. they put us on the thing. Yeah. I was like, "Yo, I hey. see you at the game. <laughs> hey, yo, what's up?" We got to do that again. Yeah, we we, we do. do and the time when when that happened, I got a million screenshots of that image. Like, yo, <laughs> what's up with your like, boy? Damn, what's up with your man? <laughs> Like what's what's popping with your man? Everybody bro? relax. <laughs> I love I love I had no idea that it that I would get that type of reaction, but afterwards I'm like good good. Right. People need to just chill out. What what if? Kick them out of their comfort zone a little. Yeah bit. man. Like what if whatever they thought I was doing I was actually doing. Like what if? What's the worst? What right. if I was very proud of my ass and wanted to show it? You obviously are. You know, boy, I wasn't thinking about it. Man. You know. <laughs> I was just, yeah. Any Hennessy in the play there? Any any vodka sodas in play there? Of course. Yeah, yeah, a little of bit. Of course. A little yeah, bit. A, little a lot of it. A little sippy sippy. Yeah, when I was like, because that's who I am as a person. Right. And, you know, uh, speaking to what we were talking about before, mm -hmm. having feeling forced to live a certain way and, you know, always make up excuses at this, it, it's part of the, you know, fuck it stage. Right. Do you know what I mean? Right. Who gives it? Who, get, who gives it? Now, um, when you first got popping, you were li you were uh, widely regarded as one of the sexy niggas of Hollywood. Okay, that was a thing, right? So okay. if we, let, let's say we take it to like 2000, right? You okay. know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, um, there's still a bunch of chicks. You know, if you want to make a round in oh, the for office real? and see what's popping, still okay. a bunch of them in there. Just right. Trying to just waiting for you. Right. Um, it was I would say that era was you, Morris, really the whole cast of the wood. Terrence right. was really, Terrence really wasn't in that. He wasn't. Nah, not really. All right, now, is that you? No, no, he was no, he was, he was light skin he was, with he was, light no, eyes. He was he was popping as far as the his career, huh. but Terrence really I didn't hear too many chicks talk about yo Terrence is the one. Not at that point because it was on mm. some dark skin shit then as well. A little bit, huh? A little bit. Um, but while this was happening, you were married this whole time, right? Yeah. So you really couldn't swerve, swerve like you wanted to. Yeah. So out of Ellen Papeo. Uh, Regina Hall, Sanaa Lathan, Neil Long, Katie Holmes and Go, Angela Bassett, and Regina King, which co-star do you wish you would have been single to bust down when you were... <laughs> so once again, we're going to go through this list. Regina Hall, Sanaa Lathan, Katie Holmes, 
Neil Long, who is the leader in the clubhouse for me. I kind of remember <laughs> we went to the Best Man premiere, and <laughs> Neil looked like Black Excellence, man. Uh, Angela Bassett, who was in, I still was Regina King, Ellen Pompeo. But what we don't have, we don't have any of the cast of Private Practice on this uh, list. I know, right? Because you got Audra. Yeah. You got Audra on Private Practice. Kate Listen. Walsh. Kate got, Walsh, uh, who was in Girls Trip. Right. Kate Walsh, and then Katie Strickland. Katie Strickland. Oh, okay, you ain't sleeping. Okay. Katie, bro. Katie Strickland. Let me tell you what. Let me tell she you. Could get it. Let me tell you a story about Katie Strickland that got me in trouble. <laughs> Back in the day, my girl had drugged me to see this movie, uh, The Family That Prays. Okay. The Family That Prays. Tyler Perry movie. Okay. I see Katie Strickland. Yeah. All oh, right. Yes. She's in the movie. Yep. Yes, she Katie is. Katie Strickland's in that movie. Right? Oh, yeah. She comes in, and into this room, she catches, I guess, uh, Sanaa Lathan. Right. Was with cheating with Cole Hauser. They right, all know. right. And she walks out. And I, I, I was in the theater with my girl. I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she walks I was out. Like, she walked out because Katie got she uh, had a little body. Okay. I was like, okay. Yeah. And all of a sudden, she's like, nah, you can't do that. Especially not with a black woman. Okay. You can't, you can't, you can't do that. <laughs> um, but I'm not going to let you shirt the question. Which one? Which one? Oh, by the way, I'm going to add one. I'm going to add Layla Arcieri. Oh, from Kevin Hill because they don't have her on this list. <laughs> Layla. Layla. Now this is all hypothetical. This is the hypothetical land of the red pill. This is the brutal reality of truth. This okay. is all hypothetical. I'm gonna keep it super duper real. Super duper real. What the reaction you just saw? Something at that time. I'm gonna at that time. Um. Because, you know, like, Sanaa and Regina, they were also, like... Homegirls. Yeah. Like like sisters and stuff like sisters, that. Sisters, like a step Sisters that's fine as hell. Like a stepsister. Now, a stepsister that your dad just married their mom. Yes. So if it had to go down, it would. Yep. But it's basically, not it does not supposed to. The whole to, family can't really know about but, it. But like, he just met your mom. Y'all ain't grow up you together. You know what I mean? So if so you had to, still yeah, like I got late you. at night with Jergens, the thought <laughs> might cross, <laughs> and you might not throw it out. Word. You know I got what you. Mean? Uh-huh. But it was all a little bit, eh. But, um... And they were like marrying, they're like marrying types. Right, it wasn't gonna be like a have fun on the set. You type know of what I mean? Yeah, Those yeah, yeah. were like, you know, respect, you know, yeah. That's how I saw them. Right. I was like, oh, wow. Part of the family. You know what I mean? If black girls like me. <laughs> right, <laughs> if you could get one of them, right? Yeah, wouldn't it be great? Right. Um, Lila, uh, uh, she was in a video. So immediately, you know, that's the, video the image. Was, um, video was gunk, uh, gunk, gunk, gunk. Uh, vibrant thing. Gunk, 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 yeah. oh. Q-tip. Boy, oh. I'll tell you what. Come on. She was so fucking Come bad in that on. video, dog. <laughs> so on so many levels, right. I was like, wait a minute. I don't know, like, who is that? Right. Why is she moving like that? And then when I met her, so sweet. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I mean? Um, so that would have been the one. Oh, my lord. <laughs> my lord. That would have been the one, hypothetically. 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 I'll, I'll say that now. Yeah. Hypothetically, that would have been the one. But you know, I, I, again, no, right. no disclaimers. Yeah. So, brother, I got one more for you. Sir. Um, first of all, I can't tell you how much I appreciate this. Hey, man, I'm, I appreciate you, and I'm, I'm happy that this is where it's starting out. Yeah, the beginning of the journey. Yes, sir. So... My last question is a two-part question. Tupac? Not Tupac. <laughs> <laughs> it's a two-part question. If Tay Diggs, 1997. What is that? It's the beginning? Is that that's, the beginning? That's the beginning. That's Stella? That's Stella. Could see Tay Diggs, 2017. Okay. What would he think? Oh, like, right. Ooh. <laughs> if Tay Keeping Diggs, it real? We being real, if Tay Diggs 1997 could see Tay Diggs 2017, what would he think? What? Because your career would he is not your think? career is not by any means over. We got some work to do. Yeah. Um, but yeah. right now at the midpoint of your career, what would what would that guy think? The guy who had all those illusions. Now, take this the right way. Take this however you 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 want to take it. Mm -hmm. 
I, I, I say this coming from a positive place, you know what right. I mean? Um, this is post-divorce, this is, you know, post-therapy. You know, Tay Diggs back then was very black and white, was very, um, not literally, well, literally too, mm -hmm. was very, um, there's a, a right way to do things and a wrong way to do things. I'm gonna have this type of career and there's no room for anything else. Tay Diggs back then would have maybe felt a little sorry for Tay Diggs 2017 mm. because it was a it was a it was a tough year. I was growing a lot and yeah. um, very you know reflective and um, you know moved in with my girl and her two kids and. I said 2017. We're actually in 2018. Yeah. Like, oh, well, 18. Yeah, he's eight, gonna be hyped. It's gonna 18 be like, is gonna be hyped. Congrat, hyped. congrats. So, you, oh, so that changes yeah, now. Right? Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Tay Diggs, Tay Diggs then to Tay Diggs yeah. now. You feel like you'd be, you're, you're be like, oh man, he's not. You're not. You're not Will Smith yet. Like you're not. <laughs> he might be a little bit like that. Right. And been like, oh, you should have done this. You should have done that. Mm -hmm. You know, look at me now. You should have taken these steps as mm -hmm. opposed to. You know, now me, it's not all about that. It's it's right. about, you know, who I am inside and what I'm giving back and, you know, trying to be real and honest with myself and whatnot. All that stuff was for the birds, you right. know, to, to 1997, right. Tay Diggs. <laughs> One role that you lost that you really wish you would have gotten? Um, um, Blame. Um, I don't know if I was. I want to. I want to bring that back. I'm not. I'm not done with that yet. You want to bring back Blade? Yep. Yep. I, absolutely. Somehow, whether it's with Wesley or not, like that's my favorite. That's my favorite. My yeah. favorite superhero. I, I, I'm not a comic book dude. Right. But and now my son's into it. Um, just the whole. He's just a badass. Um, I don't know. Say, I don't think I was even in the running for 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 for, for that. But just um, any any role. Um, oh, I would have Black Panther would have been fresh, mm. and uh, and you know, and I say that without it's all love, um, but in my head, that makes sense to me as well as as, as my man. Mm -hmm. But uh, coming up, I thought that was I was like, okay, well, when when, it, when the time comes, when the times come, when the time yeah, comes, yeah, yeah. So when they come out with the second one, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna be in You'll that be in somehow, that some kind of way, some kind of way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm it. a superhero, man. Right. I see it. Cause really, to be honest with you. I, I, when I saw the movie, I was looking for you somewhere in it because right? they cast everybody in the damn town in the movie <laughs> except for you. Everybody was in the movie. I, I'm in the movie. I'm going. How do Forrest you? Whitaker too? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like. And agents will be like, "Well, you weren't available. You weren't available." <laughs> I'm like, "Motherfucker, yes, I was." That, that, that had Forrest Whitaker. They had. I mean, I wanna, and I'm it. so scared to ask. Mm -hmm. What went down? Because I feel like I will fire everybody. <laughs> so I'm just gonna be like, you know what? The universe has a reason. Oh my God. They were all supposed to be in it. I'm, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get mine. Bruh. Ah. I appreciate you coming on, man. Gotta do this again. All right. Appreciate That's you being our first guest. I appreciate you. You actually sir. pulled no Congrats. punches. I was expecting you to do a little Hollywood dance, but you didn't. <laughs> I was expecting you to Hollywood. No shuffle. No, not oh, at all. Oh, I'm good. Well, I know that you'll call me on it if, if, if that's the case. So yeah. I appreciate that. Appreciate you, brother. We're going to get a PA with you to make sure you can find your way back to your house. Please. <laughs> the Red Pill.